Bruegel together with the Institute for International Economic Studies in Tokyo and with the Peterson Institute of Washington, D.C., organized a conference in Tokyo uh, on the situation, the, the global economy. But a lot of the focus of the discussion was on the new economic policy in Japan, dubbed Abenomics. So today we're going to discuss uh, what, uh, what are the, the questions about this policy and what uh, are the questions of importance for Europe. So Guntram, how should we define Abenomics? It's, it's fundamentally monetary policy, right? So Abenomics is centered around three uh, different uh, concepts. One is a massive monetary expansion. The second one is a flexible fiscal policy. And the third one is a growth strategy, including free trade agreements in the, in the, trans in the Pacific. Now, uh, probably the most important one uh, of all these three, at least in the short run and in the last uh, couple of months, has been the monetary part. Uh, and I think this has really received the most attention. Now, in the monetary, I think uh, really the, the key question is how much will the new governor um, of the Bank of Japan actually act? Uh, it appears now that um, the new governor is determined to be very aggressive. He will have to do a major uh, monetary expansion, buy uh, bonds, uh, government bonds, but also go beyond the buying of government bonds, um, because government bonds alone probably won't be enough to, uh, to really uh, change fundamentally the inflation dynamics. Co compared to the U.S., to QE, I mean, the defining feature of, uh, of the approach in Japan is the exchange rate, the role of the exchange rate, it plays much more uh, of a role than in the, in the U.S. case. I mean, a large part of the hope is that there will be important inflation, which is what raises concerns among partners because they, they fear that it would turn into a sort of competitive deregulation. Although, I mean, in the spirit of it, it's, it's, it's largely a nominal phenomenon. The idea is to, to, you know, to, to devalue the nominal exchange rate to get more inflation. So to reach the 2% inflation target. But nevertheless, it may imply a real depreciation that is substantial enough to raise concerns. One of the points that Kuichi Hamada, um, the main advisor to Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, his main points was always that monetary policy, as long as it's domestic monetary policy, is not uh, engaging in currency wars. But obviously, monetary policy, if it acts domestically, even if you just buy domestic assets, creates movements in the exchange rate. Uh, and so I think this is, this is really very clearly visible. The exchange rate has come down uh, by a very significant amount, much more actually against the euro again, than against, uh, against um, the US dollar. Because there was another variant of Abenomics that was uh, supported by uh, Mr. Iwata, who was another candidate for the Bank of Japan, who has basically advocated uh, you know, buying uh, foreign bonds. Um, well, yeah, I so, think so that's it right. Was, it was exchange rate intervention. Basically, it was it, it was not the, the the counterpart of domestic policies. It was really targeted at the exchange rate. In, in perfect markets, it wouldn't make a difference whether you buy foreign assets or domestic assets because basically they they both operate on the interest rate and the relative interest rate and the exchange rate then moves. So. I think it was probably a mistake to emphasize um, the foreign asset buying so much because if you buy a lot of domestic assets, you get the exchange rate down as well, and you know, but you you meet less foreign resistance, um, political resistance. Yes, I mean that goes through the, the effect on the interest rate. Uh, but how how much? I mean, something that is unclear to me is how much medium-term uh, sort of forward guidance uh, do they contemplate? Yeah, I think the, the exact um, strategy is not yet really defined, but, uh, but I agree. I mean, this, uh, this is, um, they will have to go for long-term assets, certainly, to bring down the yields of long-term assets. But um, I think they will also have to be a very strong commitment to, uh, to keep these long-term assets yields really low for a very long time, which will, may mean that the Bank of Japan has to buy hundreds and hundreds of billions um, of, of yen uh, of, uh, of assets. Now, the discussion they were at the last G20 already implies some degree of constraint on the, what uh, Japan is going to do, because essentially the message was there is no currency war at present, but there are limits to what we can do, so, so, so that we have to keep some degree of consistency. Yeah, I guess, I mean, the question is how much the exchange rate uh, should, should move um, and how much further uh, it should move. I think one of the problems, if it moves um, too fast, too much, um, we have also a J-curve effect so that the trade deficit can actually 
uh, for for some time at least increase instead of decrease, and uh, and you know this may may harm um, you know the trade, um, the current account dynamics and the trade dynamics of uh, of Japan at least in the short run. No, I think I think the problem for Europe. I mean, it brings us to back to the discussion about about Europe. The the, the problem yeah. is that the degree of uh, internal rebalancing uh, that is needed within the euro area. Um, implies that some of this rebalancing also takes place vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world, so that countries like, like Spain would need a competitive exchange rate to continue exporting and continue rebalancing through their trade with the rest of the world. So uh, the, that's what makes the Europeans more sensitive than, than usual yes. to the exchange rate issue. You don't want the euro to be too strong, that's true. It is not, uh, I mean, it is not, at the time of, of speaking, it is clearly not overvalued, but there is a sensitivity. There is a sensitivity.